Todd, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Did you ever think we'd get to such a crazy spot with this draft stuff? Well, I think it's interesting because we look at these quarterbacks and who's plug and play, and it seems to evolve almost weekly where you go, okay, Dwayne Haskins now, is he a top 10 pick? You know, where was he four months ago? Now you put in Kyler Murray. Is he a first round, second round? Who needs a quarterback? How badly do you need a quarterback? So I think that's where the interest always lies with a draft that feels like it's defensive line heavy at the top. It is. I was just looking at it. Uh, 19 of the top 22 players right now that I have ranked are on the defensive side of the ball. It's crazy. Wow. I mean, I've never had that. that it weighed so heavily in, on one side of the football. And, and you know, for, for TV execs and everybody else, it's not, it's not <laughs> ideal. Especially coming off of last year where we, we got spoiled. I mean, there, we've set a record for f- four quarterbacks drafted in the top 10 and five drafted in the first round and now you're looking at a class with Justin Herbert who's really talented but has a lot of work still to do Dwayne Haskins like you said you know it's another Mitch Trubisky type thing where you're looking at 13 starts and um, and then after that again a bunch of guys that have talent and have potential but it just aren't there yet Will Greer from West Virginia Drew Locke from Missouri, Brian Finley from North Carolina State, Daniel Jones from Duke. List goes on. I mean, there really are nine guys that could wind up going in the second and third rounds, but none of which I feel great about drafting in the first round. There's no plug-and-play guy? No, not in my opinion. Justin Herbert's the, the most talented of the group. I mean, he he's kind of like Josh Allen from a year ago, where – you know the talent's there. You know if he's developed properly. And then you saw as a rookie, you're seeing as a rookie flashes of him make some great plays, but then the inconsistency that you saw throughout his career at Wyoming. And then, you know, Haskins has gotten better and better as the season has progressed. First tape I watched of him, I, I, I was underwhelmed, to put it lightly, against Penn State. But since then, he keeps he's, he's gotten better and better. But he just he doesn't have a lot of game experience. So to say that he can, you know, Trubisky wound up playing a lot as a rookie, and I, I wouldn't describe what he did as a rookie as playing right. But since then he's gotten better and better with, with good coaching and a system and a priority of uh, on putting guys around him. And so if Haskins winds up in a situation like that, then he's got a chance to succeed. But you, you can't guarantee all those factors. What grade do you have on Kyler Murray? I I would actually take him in the first round. I really would. I think the league is trending towards what he is. And I know he's – I've stood next to him. I'm guessing he's just shy of 5'10". But, you know, we've seen guys now who are shorter. They're coming in the league. The league is just more spread out. And it's not about standing you know, in the pocket and making the, the same kind of throws that you had to make even five, seven years ago. Um you just you're able to be, with everything being more spread, hitting the seams, throwing the ball outside, extending plays with your feet. I just I think he fits today's NFL with quick processing, quick release, and then unbelievable athleticism to extend plays and, and create with his feet. I'm also curious about this because everybody has an opinion on what sport he should play. But you know, I mentioned right. this first hour. The thing I would factor in. What sport does he want to play? Because it feels like he wants to play football. He might be really good at baseball if you're drafted, you know, eighth overall. And it's a safer decision. Maybe there's more money there. There's longevity. But I I get the feeling the more success he's having at Oklahoma, the more that he, like, he loves football more than baseball. Do we know? I can't tell. See, uh, you know, so we were in, we had two Oklahoma games back to back. We had them against, um, we had them, was it, I think in Lubbock against Texas Tech, and then we had them the following week at home. And talking to Lincoln Riley, it was the first time I got any sense that Tyler might stick with football. He might come back and play again next year, and he might want to look into his NFL future. And so I, I kind of I put it out there because Lincoln was adamant about it. He said, we, we, we discussed it. I talked to his parents. I talked to him. And we just we made a promise to each other that we were not going to discuss. We we're not going to revisit this conversation until after the season. Let's see how things go. 
let's see if you fall in love with actually starting and playing and, and doing all the things that he's doing this year. And then I, you know, I've watched a couple things since with he, you know, he sat down with Tim Tebow and he, and somebody else came, I think his, his, his agent in baseball, uh, Scott Boris came out and reported that no, he's absolutely playing baseball. And, and then he said to Tim that he wasn't returning to Oklahoma next year. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it leads me to believe that he is, is planning on playing baseball, and that's what everyone seems to think. And every NFL scout and general manager I've talked to thinks that he's playing baseball. But when you talk to people inside the football program, they seem to think mm. that he absolutely loves football and agree with what you're saying. So, I don't know, there's still this little bit of question you know, out there, and I think he would be a tremendous football player. I really would. I think, like I said, he, if, as a first-round draft pick, you're going to make somewhere in the 10 to $25 million guaranteed uh, range in terms of money. So I, I think there's a bigger decision still to be made, but maybe, you know, maybe I'm, I'm wrong and he's already made it and he's going to go play baseball. He's Todd McShay, ESPN draft and college football analyst. He's got a mock draft he'll unveil next Wednesday morning on ESPN. If Tua Tonga-Vailoa were in this draft, where would he go? First round. <laughs> First quarterback? Same thing. I mean, yeah, he would be the first pick. He, he probably, I don't, I can't say he'd be the first pick overall this year. When you look at it, I mean, as the projections are right now, the Giants would be, I think, sixth or seventh, and they would be the first team that actually needs the quarterback because you, you've got San Francisco and Arizona, and Detroit, and the Jets, and they all they all either have a quarterback or just drafted one last year. So, I think. Uh, but I do think Tua would be the first the first quarterback taken. I think it would probably be the Giants if they moved up or not. The Jaguars are sitting there at nine, and I think Miami's at thirteen. Those are probably right now, if the draft were today, according to the order, those would be the three three teams that you'd be looking at in the top thirteen picks that, that need quarterbacks. And judging by recent history, teams have been moving up uh, just about every single year to go get these quarterbacks. So I, my guess is that one of them would move up to, to go get Tua if he were available. If you redrafted from last year, what what would be the biggest change? If you were the Browns, would you still have taken Baker Mayfield if we redraft? There's nothing he's done this year that, that would... I mean, I personally, I wouldn't have. I would have taken Sam Darnold. And I, I would stick with that, you okay. know, just myself. But if you're the Browns and you made that decision, you, there really isn't anything this year that you've seen that would lead you to go in a different direction. Well, maybe the question is if you're the Giants. And so, you know, you got the second pick and Saquon Barkley is going to the Pro Bowl. I know. Um, I, know I know. And he's, 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 he's having a, a near record setting season as a rookie running back. <laughs> Do the Giants still take Saquon Barkley, or do they take Sam Darnold? I would have taken Sam Darnold at the time, and I still would. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I, how do you sit there and knowing this? So look where they're going to be drafting sixth or seventh overall, it looks like. Yeah. And, you, and you're, you hit a grand slam with that pick. You couldn't have asked for anything more out of Saquon Barkley. Than, you, than what you expected to get from him. Yeah. But you're still in a position where you have a top 10 draft pick, and you're losing all these games. The answer, unfortunately, is you've got to find a quarterback. And I, you know, especially in that town that watching the, and the Jets haven't had a ton of success either. So I, I get it. But at least they have their quarterback in the future. I, I would take quarterback over running back every single time. But you have to make sure that you've taken the right quarterback because everybody says, well, you got to take a quarterback. No, you have to take the right quarterback there. Right. Remember, the, yeah, there's been drafts where you, all of a sudden these GMs go, oh, my God, we got to go get our quarterback. And you're taking Blaine Gabbert. And you know, like you're just everybody went all in on that draft and they went stupid. Um, so that's, yeah. you know, the giant team, EJ Manuel, Geno Smith, yes. Blake Bortles, Johnny Manziel, you know, Bridgewater, who actually played well, but but can't couldn't stay healthy. So. Does Tampa take a quarterback? Are they done with Jameis Winston? Uh, three three four weeks ago, I would have said absolutely. Now I I'm not 100 percent certain. I really I I don't think they do. My gut tells okay. me that they're going to try to ride it out. Do the Raiders? That one's interesting because we all know John and. He's got quarterback ADD. 
<laughs> you know, and he's just, he's never satisfied. I, you know, Derek has had some really good moments, but I, I we haven't seen it, a lot of it in consistency the last two years. They need a lot of other things, but it would not surprise me, especially with three picks in the first round. So right now I think it's they would have the second overall pick and then 23 and 25. So it wouldn't shock me if maybe he took a, a Nick Bosa or one of these defensive linemen with that first pick and then with 23 or 25 or maybe package them together and go up and get, get the quarterback that he wants. But it, he, it wouldn't shock me if he wound up taking one. It really wouldn't. If Jared Goff and Todd Gurley were both available and you can only have one, Uh, you're pinning me in the corner here. Uh, <laughs> Cause I just said you have to. Take <laughs> I know that's, I would, why, that's why I asked. I, I would still go. I would still go with the quarterback. So to not contradict myself, but it would be a damn. That would be hard. <laughs> would be How about Gurley? I mean, everything really legitimately runs through Gurley in that, that organization. Gurley or Aaron Donald? Uh, Aaron Donald. Okay. I think he's the best defensive player. He might, he might be the best player in the NFL today. Goff or Aaron Donald? I'm still I'm going Aaron Donald. <laughs> oh, you are! <laughs> you, well, you, you I finally, finally got Goff. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Todd, thank you. Good luck with uh, the mock draft next Wednesday. I appreciate it, bud. See you soon. Todd McShay, ESPN NFL. I knew I was going to get him. Uh, College football analyst is Mock Draft 1.0 next Wednesday morning. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app. 